Today we're talking about type aliases in Swift. We're going to talk about what they are, how and when to use them, uh, the pros and cons, because it is a bit of a debated topic. Uh, some developers really enjoy using them. Some, like myself, find them to be more confusing than helpful. Curious where you land in all that. But anyway, in this video, I'm going to show you what they are and let you come to your own conclusion. But first, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, and that is Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to get your beautiful online presence or iOS developer portfolio up and running very quickly. Head on over to squarespace.com slash Allen to get started. The first scenario we're going to talk about is using type aliases for closures. Now, if you've seen closures, you know they can be kind of confusing to read. As you can see here in our network manager, we have closures for when we're retrieving our followers. So see, escaping, we're using the result type, returns a, you know an array of followers, and an error, and returns void here. So what we can do with a type alias is instead of having you know this code, which again confuses a lot of people, it's not super readable, we can create a type alias for that. And to do that, we use the keyword type alias, and you see we get some autocompletion. So if you hit return, this will spell it out for you. So what is the new name you wanna give it? So we're retrieving our followers. So let's call this follower list closure. And now we need to put the closure here. So let's uh, yank this whole thing out here. So command uh, X, command V. So now we've put our closure into our follower list closure. And then now here where we have that code, we can put follower list closure. And the functionality doesn't change at all. We just, like I said, gave it a nickname, just gave it a new name that you can now use. Now, here's where uh, the debate comes in, at least in my opinion. There's no argument this reads a lot cleaner than what was there before, right? You can't argue that. It does read cleaner. However, I just find it as an extra step because when you're not familiar with the code base or you didn't write the code yourself, you're coming in here, you don't know what the follower list closure is. You have to like click into it and go find it. Now, of course, this is two lines above it, no big deal. But if we did the same thing for you know our other network calls down here and created our uh, type alias for this closure, and we had all the type aliases you know listed nice and neatly up here on lines 19, 20, and 21, now I would have to be like, okay, what is the you know what is the UI image closure? Got to go up, look and see what it is. My preference, I would rather have the information right here. Like just keep the closure there. That way it's nice right next to where I need it. I don't have to go look for it. Yes, it reads nicely, but to me, it has an extra step that I gotta go look for. Again, this is why it's kind of debated. Some people like the readability. I would rather have the convenience of the information being right there. But as always, I would love to hear your take on it, you know, with your reasoning in the comments, cause I love an open-ended discussion and I don't know, who knows, maybe you can convince me. The next example I wanna show is about uh, protocol conformance and how you can combine them. Uh, you may be familiar with Codable, but let's actually go to our model and go to our user object, uh, which does conform to Codable. So all Codable is, is a type alias for encodable and decodable. Let's actually click into it. So if you uh, control, uh, command click, jump to definition, you see here, it's a public type alias Codable equals decodable and codable. And if you look up here, it says Codable is a type alias for the encodable and decodable protocols. Yada, yada, yada. So it's a way to, you know, instead of listing out a bunch of different protocols, you can combine them into one name. Let's talk about probably the most common example and something you could utilize in your code bases. Uh, and that is the table view uh, delegate and, and uh, data source protocols. So let's go to our favorites list VC. Here's the screen real quick, just for context. It's just a basic table view. Uh, so we are gonna go down to our table view methods here in our extension. So like I said, instead of having table view data source and table view delegate, we can create something like type alias, there we go, call it table view methods. And then if we cut this, command X, got the mic in the way, it's always a pain. Uh, and then you need, you can't do the comma separator, you have to do the ampersand for and. And then now we can do table view methods. Now you probably wanna put this, right? You wanna declare it here and then use it there. It seems a little bit redundant, but uh, this can be in like your constants uh, file if you want. So utilities, constants, you can throw your list of type aliases in the constants. And then now you have the access to that on all your view controllers. So do command B. There we go. So now any view controller that you want to conform to the table view delegate and data source, which as you probably know, very common. Uh, now you can just do table view methods and there you go. So 
This is actually one that I like using type aliases. Um, I don't think this is as confusing as the other examples. So to me, this is like one of type aliases saving grace. I, I like using them like this. Now for the last example, we're gonna talk about giving typical types a different name. So uh, for that example, let's go, let's minimize some of these here, custom views, uh, view controllers, GF data loading VC. So down here, we have a function that we call on any view controller that loads data called show empty state. And here in the function signature, show empty state view with message, right? Cause the empty state, as you can see up here on the screen, shows a message like, hey, this user doesn't have any followers, uh, whatever. But at the call site, like it makes sense in the function signature, right? Show empty state view with message. Well, at the call site, uh, it reads a little, you can see how it could be convoluted. So let's go to the call site here, right? Show empty state view with, and you have to pass in a string. So if I, if I actually type this out, you can see what I get here. Show uh, empty state view with string. Now, as the user of the code, and again, if you're not familiar, you weren't the one that wrote it, you may not know like, wait, why do I have to pass in a string? Like, like what is that? Then you got to jump back to the function signature. Oh, okay, I got to pass in a message. Well, here we can create a type alias for this string to be a little more clear. So let's actually delete uh, this that we just typed out. We'll come back to it. And here in our data loading VC, let's create a type alias real quick. Type alias, call it uh, empty state message and it is going to be an alias for a string. And then now instead of taking in a string, it'll take in an empty state message. And all this is doing is improving readability. So now at the call site, if I go back to it, now when I call it, let's do a command B to make sure autocomplete you know, works, self.show empty state message. And you see, I get GF data loading VC dot empty state message. Uh, that's because it's showing me where it is uh, actually listed. If I go back here, go to constants, you know, kind of make like a type alias list here, empty state string. Now, if I go back to the uh, favorites list VC, do command B, we'll redo this again, self dot show empty state message. And now you can see with empty state message, right? That's a little more clear than just with string. Like that lets the user of the code know like, oh, I need to pass in a message. But again, the readability I think comes with a little bit of confusion because now you might be like, well, what is an empty state message? Cause I know I often default to thinking that's some sort of object right? And there's like a model somewhere for it. Um, I don't know that it's just a string. And the only way that I find out that it's just a string is I got to go look up the type alias. Oh, okay. It's a string. So in, in my opinion, like they're, they're very helpful, you know, like if you know your code base or your team knows your code base, I think they become more confusing than helpful. And maybe they like increase the learning curve for new developers coming into your code base. So I don't know, it's a bit of a trade-off. Like I said, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments on if you like using them and why, and if you don't like using them and why. Like I said, I tend to lean towards they're more confusing than helpful. That's just me. Maybe I'm missing something. I mean, again, leave what you think. I'm, I'm happy to be converted, uh, but that's where I stand right now on them. Now, if you're here learning about type aliases, that means you're an iOS developer. And if you're trying to get that first job or that next contract or, or even that second job, Having a beautiful portfolio is a vital piece of that puzzle. And that brings me back to today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to help you get that website, online presence, you know, iOS developer portfolio up and running very quickly. I mean, you know, we're, we're iOS developers. We want to build apps. We don't want to spend our time building and managing a website and making sure it works on all screen sizes, all devices, different web browsers. Like, that's just a pain that we probably don't wanna deal with as iOS developers. So I think Squarespace is a great way to, again, get that portfolio up and running super quickly, and it'll look nice. Like they have all kinds of great, beautiful themes. They handle the analytics for you, all the SEO work. Like it just takes so much off your plate. So I can't recommend it enough to get your portfolio up and running. So head on over to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you're ready to actually launch that uh, portfolio, go to squarespace.com slash Sean Allen to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So again, that wraps up the video on type aliases. Like I said, it's kind of debated in the developer community, whether they're more confusing than helpful. Uh, again, let me know what you think in the comments. If you like my teaching style, check out the website on the screen. I started creating my own courses. We'll catch you in the next video.